Welcome back! In the last video, we showed you how to use the Edit and Replace Group tools. In this video, we'll be using those tools and introducing the Action Group tools. Let's start by reviewing. It's easy to convert lines and polylines to curves. I'll use the Arc Fit tool to change the eye into an arc. Before we add shape to our arc, we want to introduce you to a handy shortcut for switching to the selector. Press the Escape key once to deselect but keep your tool. Press Escape a second time to switch to the selector. Now I can give the arc some shape. I'm going to join the bottom parts of the wing into one polyline. I can use the Bezier Fit tool to give the wing shape. I'd also like to add shape to the top of the wing. I'll try an arc first. That's not the shape I want, so I'll convert the arc to a bezier. Now we'll look at some new tools. We can add more eggs with the mirror tool. I'll get the tool, then select both eggs. When I mouse over a leg, it becomes a mirror line and I see a preview. I'll click to accept. Whenever we use an element as a mirror line, it will change its tool to a reference. I'll use a hotkey to change it back to the pen. All hotkeys are listed in the help file. I'll move one egg, then use the break tool to remove the overlap. When I select the break tool, both intersection points light up. I'll click on each to break there. Now I'll delete the overlap portion. I think the wing could be larger. I'll select it, then use the Scale tool to scale it up by 20%. The Scale tool let me scale the X and Y dimensions independently, but we'll use 1.2 for each to scale equally in all directions. When I mouse over the Scale button, we see a preview. That looks right, so I'll click to Accept. We can change the angle of the wing with the Rotate tool. With the wing selected, I'll click the tool. In the content panel, I have presets for common angles, but I'll enter 10 degrees. When I mouse over the rotate button, the preview appears, and I can click to accept. Let's use the break tool again to remove the overlap we just created. There are six different versions of the duplicate tool. Delta, Array, Polar Array, Offset, Place, and Offset with Trim. We'll use the Offset with Trim tool first. In the Content panel, I can choose one of the preset offsets or enter a custom offset. The preview will appear on the same side of my selected element as my cursor. I can click to accept. I want to copy both legs. I'll select the other leg and offset it to the right. I'll use the Snap feature to connect our new elements. You can also copy elements by using Ctrl-C, Ctrl-V. When you type Ctrl-V, the copy appears at your current mouse location. Let's give our tail feathers some shape. I'll convert this line to an arc. Then I'll mirror it about its endpoints. I'm going to copy this feather in a polar array. Polar arrays are always oriented around the origin, so first I need to relocate the origin. With the origin tool, I'll snap the origin to the base of the feathers. I'll select the arc feather, Click on the Duplicate drop-down and select Polar Array. We want three feathers, so in the Content panel, we set the count to three. The angle from the first to the last feather looks a little more than 90 degrees, so I'll try setting the angle to Fill to 95. When I mouse over the Duplicate button, we see the preview. I'll click to accept it. We don't need the lines anymore, so I'll delete them. Before we do the same thing on our bird's head, we need a little room at the top. 
I'll use the Move tool to reposition our bird. I'll select the elements in the bird, then click Move. We only need a little bit of space, so I'll set the Y value to minus 0.25 to move down a quarter inch. When I mouse over the Move button, I see the preview. I'll click to accept. I want to use the Polar Array tool again to improve on our head feathers. Before I start, I'll snap the origin to the base of the head feathers. I'll use the Arc Fit tool to give one of our head feathers some shape. Now I can mirror this arc about itself. I'll select the feather I want to copy, click on the duplicate drop down, and select Polar Array. I want three feathers, so the count will be three. It looks like the angle between the first and the last is about 125 degrees, so I'll enter that value. When I mouse over the duplicate button, we can see that the angle is greater than 125, so I'll change to 140 and try again. That looks right, so I'll click to confirm. Now I'll remove the lines and adjust the size of one feather just for fun. I'll save my work and we'll finish our curved bird in the third editing tools video.